Hello and welcome to ETCD 503, Designing Learning Ecosystems. Now, before we take a brief look at what a learning ecosystem is, and also what's going to happen in the course, I just wanted to highlight my contact information a little bit. You can call me anytime between, oh, let's say 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. at 520-991-7304, or feel free to text me at that number anytime, including the weekends. Also, I check email regularly, so you can email me at cgj at email.arizona.edu. So, let's take a look at what a learning ecosystem is. Now, the learning ecosystem, or that which makes up all of learning, is actually the interaction of a variety of different environments. Now, the environment that you spent time studying in this program is the digital learning environment. However, another important environment is the physical learning environment in which we use the digital tools. As we look at the digital and physical environments and how they interact in the ecosystem, we also have to keep in mind the learner environment, the pre-knowledge that students enter our classrooms with, and the habits of mind that they've developed along the way, also their facility or not with digital tools. Another environment is the instructional environment. Again, teachers come in with a knowledge of what teaching is and is not, how it's been traditionally conducted, and perhaps with ideas of how it can be done differently, and also with a wide variety of skills and knowledge and how to use the digital tools that are exploding on the learning landscape. Our final environment is the community environment, and this is the environment in which all learning takes place. So we need to keep in mind what happens in that environment as well. Now, I happen to think that the physical learning environment is often overlooked. And so we will be focusing a large portion of this course looking at designing new, innovative, active learning spaces. Why? Why are we talking about classrooms? I mean, everything's going digital. I believe that we're all social animals. And as social animals, we have a basic fundamental need to come together to explore and learn. And we can't do it in the boxes that were designed over 100 years ago to support an industrial-aged education. Laying on top of that, all of the things that we know we can do with digital tools to improve education is more often than not hindered by the old classroom structure. Therefore, in this course, you're going to identify a design challenge around a physical learning space and through a process called design thinking, develop a model of a new learning space. There are four milestones to the course. The first is to explore the concept of learning space design. The second is to use design thinking to identify a design challenge and through the process of ideation, a possible solution to that challenge. In experimentation, you'll create a model based on your ideation. And finally, you'll present your ideas to the class. So let's take a look at the course and see how it's structured. Here we are in the course site. During the first week of class, please spend a little time going through the begin course here and all of the information that you'll find under course information. Also, review the class participation project because there is something due this coming Friday. It's basically your introductions and confirming information that I have about you. Then my suggestion is to look through each step of the project and realize that this entire course is one project. The course is designed for you to identify a design challenge related to a physical space, develop ideas on how to solve that problem, build a model of a potential solution, and present that model to class. So each of these individual components of the project have individual due dates, and they start with the learning space introduction. So within learning about learning space, there are four sub-milestones. Each of them is detailed in the remainder of this page. So please make sure that you read through the detail and also look at the assessment rubrics at the end of the project that details how you'll be assessed on each of these sub milestones. So you'll be working the first four weeks of class learning about learning space. 
Now, one of the things that will be different about this course than others is that while there would be a few things that you'll be putting into drop boxes, you are going to document your entire project using a method of your choice. My only requirement is that it be accessible as a website. So my suggestion is to use a website tool such as Wix, Weebly, or WordPress to create your website that will document your project. There are examples of projects from previous classes so you can see how other students set up their websites. Once you've explored learning space design, you will then learn how to use design thinking to identify your design challenge. Now there are three major steps within design thinking and they're called different things depending on who you're reading in terms of design thinking, but we're going to use discovery, interpretation, and ideation. And each of these steps has separate sub-steps. So you'll want to make sure that you keep the due dates in mind for each of these major steps. And as I mentioned, you'll be documenting each of these steps in your website. of one or more of the ideas that you develop during the ideation stage of your design thinking. Now, I have set this up for you to use a program called Floor Planner, and it has its issues. We'll talk about that later in the course. If you have another program that you like to use to design floor layouts, that's quite all right. Go ahead and use that. My only requirement is that you're able to incorporate it into your website. Now during the course, we'll have two set meetings. One of them will be in the next few weeks and I'll be sending out an email when that is. The other will be in the middle of the semester. And then during the last week of the semester, you will be doing your presentations of your projects. And we'll be doing that using the Adobe Connect meeting tool. So as a reminder, to get to Adobe Connect, you just go to UA Tools, click on Adobe Connect. It will open up another page. And on that page, you just click join the meeting. So this is where you'll go for the two class meetings. And I also may hold other meetings throughout the semester if I feel that people need a little bit of help along the way. However, most importantly, I want to point out to you that you can create your own meeting by creating a study group. So one of the things you want to do is to make sure that you've practiced your presentation before you do your presentation at the end of the semester. And you can do that by coming in here, adding a meeting, invite a couple of friends in and do your presentation. That way you'll be able to work out all of the bugs. I have a number of training materials on how to use Adobe Connect, but to be honest, if you Google use Adobe Connect, you'll find a ton of YouTube videos that are probably better than things that I can come up with. So that's it for the introduction to ETCV 503. And I have to say, this is one of the most exciting courses I teach. Everyone always comes up with some really interesting ideas, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you all come up with.